Hello, my name is Grace Weiser, and this is a little presentation on the Venus Flower Basket. The Venus Flower Basket is of the phylum Periphera, class Exactinolita, and order Lysacanocida. They are a very unique sponge, mainly for their very unique structure. This particular sponge can be found in the ocean around the Philippine Island and the east coast of South Africa, but the class Hexactinolita can be found across the world. They can be found at depths of just 10 meters to up to 6,000 meters below the surface, and they usually live in cold water, around 2 to 11 degrees Celsius. As a sponge, this creature has a very simple life. It is benthic and sessile, attaching to the ocean floor and getting nutrients from filter feeding using flagella on collar cells. They have oxygen respiration, nutrition and waste removal cycles, and reproduce asexually and sexually with broadcast spawning. There are three distinct parts of this sponge. There is the osculum, or the cover top of the sponge, which is not normally seen in sponges. There is the spongicoel, the tubular body of the sponge, and finally, the holdfast, a structure normally seen on algae used to keep the organism in place. Here we have the species from the class Hexactinolita and how they are related to each other. The middle diagram shows the variety of spicules, the structural elements of sponges, for the different species, our Venus flower basket specifically being figure J, K, and E. The Venus flower basket is unique for its structure. Every single part of the sponge's skeleton is layered silica made of minerals captured by the spicules and formed into a stable structure over time. This structure is made to bend, not break, as the top layers will break before the entire structure does. This allows it to survive against ocean currents. And here's a short video better explaining it. But a structure like this is unstable. Imagine that you would take a can of soda and when it's empty, it's a cylindrical wall. It's very easy to squeeze it. So what can we do to reinforce cylinders against this failure is to make ridges that extend perpendicular to the wall of a cylinder. This is exactly what this sponge does. That's why in Peter Frutzel's laboratory, simplified versions of the sponge are made of plastic. The structures are designed by computer and then built up layer by layer with the aid of a three-dimensional copy machine. And when ready, they're crushed one by one. are not stable structures. When we build bookshelves, it's very easy to fold it if it's just a square. So what we do, we use diagonal reinforcements for, for bookshelves, and the organism does exactly the same thing. But the sponge has not braced every square. Every other square is left open. And that's for a very good reason, as Peter Fratzel's crush test confirmed. If we would try to design a structure with maximum mechanical performance, but with minimum material used, this would be the design. So if every other square is reinforced, you reach the maximum... Maximum strength, minimum materials. We have done well to mimic what the sponge has been able to accomplish naturally. Using carbon fiber in a structure similar to the sponge, we have access to a light yet very strong material. Some examples of uses for this are carbon fiber golf clubs, drive shafts, and very high performance arrows. Even the absolute world towers in Ontario, Canada. There is one more interesting fact about the Venus flower basket. In Japanese culture, it is common tradition to give one of these sponges to a newlywed couple 
as it symbolizes a strong bond between the lovers. It is, symboli it is symbolized as such because of the shrimp that live within the Venus flower basket. Technically, these are lobsters, and there are around 40 species that can live in this sponge. The eggs hatch inside the sponge, the shrimp mate, and they live there for the rest of their lives. And that is the Venus flower basket. Thank you for watching.